Welcome back, guys. So we've got a product inventor on the show today. Have you guys heard of AeroSeal? Well, AeroSeal, if you haven't, is a product that gets blown into a duct and it seals the duct from the inside. It goes to all of the crevices and cracks and stuff like that that's in the duct and starts to seal it up. Now, we are talking to, on this podcast episode, this is a two-part series, we're talking to Dr. Mark Madeira. He's the inventor of the product. He talks us through basically how he came to the idea of this and what AeroSeal is and how it works. This is part one. Part two, we'll get to that in a few days. This is the HVAC Know It All podcast. I'm your host, Gary McCready. As an HVAC contractor, we need to be insured. And it makes a lot of sense to have the same insurance company look after all our needs. Lambert Insurance Services has been protecting HVAC contractors since 2009. From general liability to workers' comp, bonding, commercial auto, and more, they've got you covered. Call Lambert Insurance Services for a free quote at 801-937-7030. Mark, so AeroSeal is something that I've had a customer use it for a specific use, and it seemed to help him. Now, I'll, I'll tell you how we used it. And we can talk about this technology from your perspective and, and building science and all that kind of stuff. But it was uh, about a year and a half ago, he bought a, an old home, a century home in an older part of a, a town. And he had a lot of air infiltration, air leakage. And he had somebody come in and use AeroSeal to go and fill all the, the gaps around the home and stuff like that. And he brought his air changes down from 14 or something like that to about four by so using he the was, product. He was, using, he was not sealing the duct system. He was sealing the... It wasn't the duct. He was sealing the envelope with it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that They call that aero barrier, but that's fine. Oh, is that aero barrier? Okay. But is the product similar then? Yes. It's a very similar product. Okay. I so could have sworn one he case, told me it was called AeroSeal. But anyway, I'm... If I'm wrong well, on that, it, I will it, put I will put my foot in my mouth and chew on. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that. Don't worry about it. They're, they're always changing. You could have been called AeroSeal envelope, AeroSeal duct. They did that for a little while. I'm not sure what would have been in place at that time. But at any rate, he's sealing the envelope of the building. Was the building occupied? No, not when they did it. No. Okay, that makes sense then. <laughs> he had he uh, had occupied meeting have furniture and all that inside the building. Oh, no, no, no. This was under construction. It was under renovation at the time. Because our, our applications, were the, we've done a home that is occupied, not occupied, meaning like furnished. Okay. And in that case, you do it a different way. You wind up, you depressurize the house and you put the fog in the attic and it sucks it in that way. But if it's, if it's a re major renovation, what I'm sure they did is they just fog the inside of the house and pressurize it. Okay. Yeah. That's, I believe that's how they did it. They had a, a blower door from what right. he told me. And basically they, they used the blower door to pressurize the home and release the arrow barrier, if that's what it was. Oh, and yeah, it just the went sealant. It released the sealant inside the house and pressurized it. And it goes up to the leaks, finds them and seals it. Correct. Okay. So, so let's talk about the arrow seal then for the duct, because that is sort of the conversation that I wanted to have with you because uh, duct leakage is a big thing, especially if it's leaking inside walls and ceilings and stuff that you can't get to easily. If it's under floors, stuff like that. I was at a home two years ago and the lady was complaining that her heating bill was extremely high and her home was maybe less than a thousand square feet or somewhere around that size. And what was happening is that under the floor where her ducts ran, it was not capsulated, so it was cold down there in the, in the wintertime relative to the space. Was it a crawl space or a basement? It was a crawl space. It was a crawl space. Okay. And, right. so, and, uh, and then if you, a crawl space. Got yeah. So if, if you pick up the floor panel to look down, there was all kinds of, you could even feel the duct leakage in the, the partitions of the duct where the duct was um, positioned together, like with the cleat, with S cleat and drive cleat. You could feel it with your hand. So I, I said to her, I said, the, the aero seal could be a product to help you out, but you're also going to have to do something with this crawl space because your duct is not insulated and you're losing all the heat uh, from your duct right. to, the, to the crawl space. So by the time it gets to your home, you've lost air pressure in your duct because you're losing it inside the crawl space and you've lost heat because your duct's not insulated and your crawl space is not encapsulated. So anyway. I just wanted to, to bring that up as sort of a precursor to the conversation. Well, one comment about that is, interestingly, if it's sheet metal ductwork, 
which it sounds like that's what you're describing yes, as opposed it was. to flexing. That means it's uninsulated. And so the biggest selling point for a bunch of our dealers in the in like the Chicago market is they were not even selling energy savings. They were selling comfort. Because the other thing that happens is sheet metal ductwork leaks a lot more than flex duct. And so what happens is you lose enough of the air that each slug of air going through the duct system spends a longer time in the duct, right? The velocity is lower. If you leak 25% of the air, the velocity is lower. The air spends longer in the duct. So not only would less air make it into the house, but it would be colder in the winter and warmer in the summer. Correct. Because yeah. what happens is it goes through too slowly and it sucks up all the heat in the summer or loses all its heat in the winter because it spends forever in the duct. So actually what we would do is we measure the temperature coming out of the ducts and before we sealed it and yep. then we'd seal it and then you'd measure the temperature afterwards. And not only did you get more air, but the air was warmer in the winter and colder in the summer. Okay, so does AeroSeal also insulate the, the interior does, of the duct? It does duct? not insulate. It does not insulate. But what it does, um, if you think of the duct system as a heat exchanger, the slower yep. you go through the heat exchanger, the more efficient it is. And you don't want an efficient heat exchanger with the outside. Right? Mm -hmm. That's a bad thing. Right. Correct. So by speeding by speeding up the airflow through the duct because of sealing the leaks, it, it's a less efficient heat exchanger with the outside. So without adding insulation, the temperature will actually improve. Okay, cool. So it doesn't so add insulation. It just makes it that the air spends less just, time. In it. Yeah, it just it just seal it just seals it. But I wanted to ask that question if there was any sort of value in doing it for the the sheer fact that it may insulate. I got to ask these questions because that's how I learn. That's how my audience learns, right? So no, I, I uh, that's I was a professor for years, so I know I know the drill. Cool. Okay, so let's let's go back to. So what is your involvement with that product? Is were you, I from from what I understand, you were one of the, the ones that brought it to the market. Is that correct? In no, no, I'm, so? I'm the guy who invented it. You invented it. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So, so I was a scientist at a national lab. Okay. And this is now the early 1990s. And I had a grad student and I worked on it for four years and we got it to work and he got a PhD out of it and we got a patent for it. And then I was a staff scientist at a national lab and I didn't know anything about business but turns out nobody wanted to license the technology from the lab and so either it was going to die or had to go do it myself so basically I became an entrepreneur so I started nice. a company in 1997 starved for four years then sold it to United Technology a Carrier Corporation okay in 2001 and then worked for them for a while Decided I didn't like that, went and became a professor. And then somebody approached me about taking the back out of carrier and starting it up again. And so I did. And that's AeroSeal, as you know, right now. They've been around since 2010. But I started the company and made up the name literally in 1996. Okay. I would like to get a few minutes of background on that. So obviously, when we go to invent something, we are doing so because of a problem that's existing. In a marketplace, sure. and you're I can, you're I can give you I can give you the spiel. I've done it in the per so, perfect. So what happened was I'm a scientist at a lab, and we were doing research. Actually, this is going back even further. 1978, I was a grad student, and I was measuring the efficiency of fireplaces. So you basically would take a house and turn it into a calorimeter. Basically, take a bunch of little electric resistance heaters, heat the house and then turn on the fireplace and watch what happened to the use of electricity by the eaters. And one day we said, well, why don't we try it with the furnace? You know, because we've been doing it with the heat. And what happened when we did it with the furnace, we got pretty crappy efficiency. And then we also figured out we were measuring the flow through the building while we were doing this. You know what a tracer gas is? Yep. Tracer yep. gas is you put in a known flow rate of a gas and you measure the concentration of that gas. And then you can tell how much air is going through the building. Every time the furnace kicked on, the amount of air going through the building would triple. And so you'd wind up with, okay, what the heck is going on? And then it was like, oh, we figured out how to be duct leaks. So then I actually roll forward a number of years and I convince people to give me money. When you're at a lab, all, all you do is things that you get people to pay you to do. So yeah. I convince, give me money to do a, a study in Sacramento on 31 houses where we 
measured carefully the energy use, the HVAC energy use in these houses. We then seal them, and then we measured it afterwards. And with duct sealing, we were getting like an 18% roughly savings. Interestingly, you might like this, being an HVAC guy, the savings for heat pumps was 35%. And the magical reason for that was that a heat pump is basically two pieces of equipment in one box. Mm -hmm. It's a heat pump, excuse me, and electric resistance backup. So when the load is too high, it switches from heat pump to resistance backup. But by Correct. sealing the yucks up, the load went down and we got rid of virtually all of the electric resistance backup. So that's why the percentage savings was so much larger. And can I ask you what climate that was when you got that rid of the electric? That was in California. Backup? Okay, so what what is sort of the design temperature in Sacramento there? I mean, I guess it doesn't really get that cold in Sacramento, right? Um, well, it'll get to the 40s for sure. And it'll often, in the middle of the winter, hit the 30s. And in the summer, it gets pretty hot, right? It'll be 100 degrees yeah. outside in the summer. Okay. And I don't remember anymore. This is 1991. I have the papers. I could find it. But basically, I don't remember how much of our testing was winter versus summer because we did both. Okay. Let me ask you this. If you kept up with the advancements in heat pump technology these days and how we can use them in cold climates and all that kind of stuff. Sure. I'm, I'm quite familiar with that. Okay, cool. So, I'm actually on the advisory board for Daikin Corporation. Oh, are you? Amazing. Cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. So this technology is... But I, actually, look, I'm going to pause you for a moment because I sure. well, there's one key fact missing. When we did right. it that point, we did it with regular craw guys crawling in the attic peeling back insulation and putting pookie on or, or mastic on the leaks. That's how we, that's where I was going next, but go on. Cause you might answer yes. some of my questions. So that's, what, that's what happened to that study. So we, we do the work, we publish the study and I thought I was a hero, right? Cause I got all the savings. And then the dealers, the contractors basically said, we will never do this again. Cause my guys hate this work. Because they have to crawl around in the attic and blah. And, and it must have been in the summer because I remember they, they would complain about the hot attics. Mm -hmm. So what happened was after that, so the problem I'm trying to solve is, okay, how do I go about making it that it's not such horrible work to do this? And I thought about going from the inside. So I looked for technologies to be able to seal from the inside. And there's a company called in situ form and they use for sewer pipes. They, they inverted cylinder they roll it out in a sewer pipe and reline it. Okay. Then there were these little like rolling things that would tape the inside of gas lines. The problem with both of those is that they can't deal with Ys and Ts and all of that kind of stuff. It's, it's a mess. All right. So then I, I saw something in the paper, this, in the Sunday paper in San Francisco, these guys, they had this big full page ad for blowing this stuff in your duct system for getting rid of dust mites and blah, 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 blah. It was air quality. And then fine print at the bottom, it says, and it seals the leaks. So I invited them to my lab, built the duct system for them, said, here, show me. And it didn't work at all. And I asked some questions, and I figured out that they didn't know anything. So then I got my French grad student, and he and I worked for three and a half years to figure out how to make it actually work. And then we did. So that was 1994. We need to do the thesis, 97 when I started the company. All right, cool. I was going to ask you about, because here where I live in Toronto area, pretty much every home you go into, the furnace and is in the basement, and then you right. have your A-coil or you have your Yeah, I, I, I grew up in a house like that. I grew up in New York City with sheet metal ducts in the basement, and you've got a, a one main trunk, for return, one main trunk for supply, and then you have risers at various spots. And those systems, I remember the argument that people made. They would say, well, it doesn't really matter because all the ducts are inside the house anyway. And over the years, I developed various counters to that, one of them being, well, if it's all inside the house anyway, why do you bother putting in a duct system, right? The purpose of the duct system is to distribute the air to where you want it. Exactly. Yeah. And so if you're losing and literally those systems on average were leaking 25% on the supply side and 25% on the return side. And so, like I was saying before, the temperatures were terrible coming out of the grills and the flows, particularly in the furthest grill, you cannot get heating or cooling out, you know, to the furthest bedroom. 
right? Because by it, the air spends too much time in the duct to get there. And so yeah. those buildings, and we had, there were papers that we wrote. This is going back 30 years, right? We did papers that looked at savings from duct systems in basements and looking at how much got lost through the walls of the basement versus got, came back into the house. And depending upon where your insulation is, you have insulated basement walls, do you have an insulated basement ceiling? Blah, 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 blah. There's actually... So where I was going to go with this is just because I was going to say most of what I see here in my area, everything is taped. Really in, in the residential side of things here, I don't see much mastic going on ductwork, but I know mastic gets used quite a bit. What I was going to ask you from, obviously, because the you were saying when you did this study the guys did not like getting up in the attics and doing doing the duct sealing and all that kind of stuff because it was time consuming and all that. Like the the advantage of using a product like AeroSeal is we don't have hard labor to get this done. We don't need to go around and tape or paint mastic on. It gets blown in from the inside or even, and even and, get to the top side of the ducts. Think about the ducts being underneath in your basement, right? Think about yeah. trying to get top side and seal those leaks. So, yeah. So, it, so how long does it take? So how long does it take from start to finish for the average, the average home, uh, the average duct system? How long does it take to get that stuff in until it's ready to actually be, be used and for, for the, the end user to, to have comfort in the home? Okay. So there's two applications. There's new construction and there's residential. And what I can tell you is that in new construction, they can do as many as four homes in a day. So they, they'll have to set up the system and they just go down in this construction process and in one day, a crew of two guys will seal four homes. On the other hand, in existing homes, a lot of times it's they do one home a day. Sometimes they do two homes a day, but they don't get, they don't get faster than that. And most of it is sort of the drive time to get there take the equipment out, set it up at the house and blah, blah, blah. That's why in new construction, they just, they, they could be prepping one while they're um, sealing the other one. So it becomes mm. much more efficient. But in so terms the, of- The, the okay. process of the, say you're set up, right? You're all set up and ready to go. How long does it take from start to finish to make sure all the ducts are sealed? Um, how many on average is about an hour. Okay. Yeah, that's that's decent. And And what's cool about it this is like, all right, I'm a nerd. What's cool about it is it actually tracks the process as it's sealing and you can watch it. So you, you actually monitor duct leakage as it's being sealed? Correct. Right. Okay. Because what you're doing, you know how much flow you're putting in. You know what the pressure is in the duct system. So you can calculate the leakage every second. And then it just makes a little graph and the, the technician can see it seal. And, deter and what happens is it starts out really fast and then it slows down as it gets near the end of the process.